Hello everyone and welcome back to For Science, Incredible Space we run to Early Access. Some of you might not know this because I haven't mentioned it in a while, but all the episodes of this series, except for the first one, were recorded during Twitch live streams, and then I edited out all the viewer interactions and slow bits and then put that up on YouTube. And so that might help explain some of the tone of the videos. Hopefully it's been a smooth enough ride so far, but obviously doing it that way is a little bit trickier than if I recorded it uh, directly and not during a live stream and then put it up, I can be more attentive to the YouTube audience that way. But uh, that's how it's been done, except for this episode. This episode is now being recorded off stream, and that is because of the timing of it. Uh, if I tried to live stream right now, I don't think I'd get much of an audience anyway. And so I'm doing it in a more relaxed mode off stream. And uh, we are going to tackle the remaining missions here, uh, basically in order of difficulty, starting with the least difficult one as far as I can tell. However, in the last video when we did the 200 tons on Minmus, I discovered that I better not be complacent about this sort of thing. Uh, it turns out that complacency can lead to unexpected difficulties, so we won't assume that they're too easy. But the way I figure it is these are probably equivalent in difficulty, relatively speaking. I. I mean, we get more signs for the Elu one, but uh, we've got a rover, and that rover should be able to drive on Elu. So I don't think that's a special problem. Environment survey and then earn science by a surface sample report, but I'm, I'm guessing we don't have to bring that one back. If we had to bring that one back, then it would be more difficult from Moho, especially. But we'll wait on those until we get an alignment of the planets. But this one is just on Kerbin. And it says launch a vessel with a lander can and perform a crew observation at Cappy Rock. Lander can is so boring though. <laughs> uh, can I make it a plane? I mean, what if we just put a lander can on a plane? <laughs> so I think I'm going to test that theory. I I'm going to try to do this, even though it says lander can, I, I think I'm going to try to make it a plane and see if it buys it. Now, there's a good reason to try for Lanarkan. It doesn't really show the, indica uh, the indication of the place right now, but let's focus. Oh, there it is, there it is. So it's on the opposite side of Kerbin from the Space Center, and probably just launching it into orbit and coming straight down at it would be a better idea. And of course, space planes have been fraught so far, but you know, It'd still be more fun, I think. So, let's try the space plane version, or airplane version, and we're gonna start off with a cockpit. Now, the heat tolerance here, uh, the Mark II cockpit has the same heat tolerance as the Condor. I think we're going, going to go with the Mark II cockpit. The Osprey also does. What does it look like if we have the... So, well... I could probably figure out how to make that work out, sort of. So, 0.67 tons there. Let's just call it 3 tons up front, it's a little bit more than 3 tons. And so I'll be looking for 3 tons of engines in the back just to balance things out with the fuel in the middle. And... We've got the rapier engine, that's 2 tons all on its own. Or we could just go jets and just go fast like that. But even two of these is the Goliath. I, I had that Sakura plane that was meant to have a long range. I'll be honest, what I really want to do right now is something crazy. I want to... I want to do something with the Goliath somehow. And make it an asymmetric plane. But this would be a bad idea. What if we actually put the Mark 1 cabin over here? As an outrigger. Oh, it doesn't attach like that though. But we can we can have a nose cone. This don't try this at home. <laughs> don't try this at home. This is this is maybe not a recommended design. We probably don't want a control surface on this one. There's a Mephalox tank. 
that adapter. And the aux is most of the mass of that. So if we take it out, the center of mass should have gone that way. Okay, maybe I should turn off and on the mass thing. There we go. Now, I've been doing asymmetric planes for a while. Uh, I did note some interest in asymmetric planes again on Twitter, so that may have inspired us a bit. So, canards, obviously. <laughs> Uh, we need pitch control, and the center mass is going to be pretty close to the, well, closer to the tail of this than the nose of it anyway. So the center pressure is over there, obviously we don't want that. And also we want when the methane all depletes for the center of mass to be close to that center of thrust, so let's check that for now. But that's got to change when I add other wing pieces. Well, right now it's saying it doesn't change at all, so that's, if it's telling the truth, a pretty good I good thing, but I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it does seem to move front and back. It doesn't move side to side, so yeah, that's pretty good. I'm using exclusively stabilizer pieces because they're lighter than the wing pieces, and I don't see any difference otherwise, so... Except I can't seem to pick this one up. Uh oh. Yeah, I'm clicking on it and I can't get one. Just as I said that, it's decided not to let me pick up a new stabilizer piece. Okay, well, it's not letting me save it. Maybe I've, I'm in some mode that I'm not supposed to be in. I should have known that this would be too much for it. <laughs> okay, let me go outside and come back in and see if that helps. Oh, I went outside and then it brought me here. Uh-oh, we've got, we've got issues. We've got issues. This is not good. The asymmetrical plane has busted the whole thing. It won't let me save it. I'm trying to load an autosave because it wouldn't let me save it. And I don't feel like it's loading the autosave. Alright, I'm gonna restart the game entirely. Okay, this time the autosave seems to be loading. This adapter is supposed to be... Oh, maybe I... Maybe it wasn't. Maybe I just set that off. Okay, alright, well, let's... Let's take it like that. Can I pick up a wing piece now? Okay. Actually, most of the discussion of uh, asymmetric planes was with offset wings. So why don't we do a little bit of that too, just to make things more interesting. Well, the center of lift is a little bit far forward compared to center mass, so we're probably going to have a horizontal stabilizer as well. I uh, take it back. This probably could use with a uh, control surface. I think we can manage a roll control surface there. So we'll have the span not be all of it. Position outboard. And then we'll have a V-tail. V-tail is not as asymmetrical as I was intending, but I feel like we've done enough. <laughs> I feel like we've done enough, though maybe the two should not be symmetrically tilted. Can we break symmetry here? No. Maybe I should put them on one at a time. <laughs> okay, well that's pretty eccentric, right? Alright, let's absolutely make sure that these are doing what I want them to do. This is just going to be roll. We might want more pitch authority, we'll see. Same, just roll. And these are our yaw and pitch. Eh, 
And this is sufficiently dangerous that I'm probably going to slap a probe core on the tail. Uh, the, the center of lift is just barely behind the center of mass right now. Let's have the probe core up here and use the Mark II probe core if we have it. Okay, we do need landing gear though. It's a bit awkward because the nose gear is going to be offset from the center of mass. That's not generally ideal. For steering. For ground handling, that's not good. Okay, it's saved. We definitely don't want any Kerbals in for the first test flight. Bill. And, uh, yeah. Let, let's see how bad this goes. Nighttime. Eh, that's fine. We don't want anybody to see us do this. Ground handling, uh, so... It is going to swerve to one side or another. Up it goes. I The pitch authority was a bit weak though. In particular, you'll note that we're sort of leaning to the left here because of the drag from that part. And so we'd sort of like something over here to counter that. But that's sort of part of the deal with making something that looks like this anyway. For a first flight, this isn't too bad. But yeah, asymmetric planes are one of my favorite challenges. I'm sort of a Burt Rutan enthusiast as far as the aircraft designs are concerned. And Burt Rutan had the famous Rutan boomerang. Rutan boomerang the Mark, uh, sorry, Model 202, I think it was. It's actually fairly nimble. It's not a fighter jet, that's for sure. It's got Goliath in the middle, after all. I'm not going under any bridge or anything. Well, I think I should try and land it, though. I'm more or less satisfied that it can fly. I didn't like how it took off, though. On rough ground, that could be a problem. And Cappy Rock is unlikely to have very nice terrain. I don't know if this has the fuel efficiency... We had the Goliath, but enough to get over there. It's got a lot of drag that doesn't need to have. And just to be clear, yeah, don't try this at home. This is not a good design for anything. It's just an interesting design. It is hardly optimal. I probably should use the whiplash or just about anything else. Rapier. Something else. If I want to get there quickly. Low thrust or no thrust handling, let's see. The Goliath doesn't have thrust vectoring, so that shouldn't change anything. Oh, oh, we, we knocked a bit. Oh no. Oh, okay. Well, it's a bumpy landing. Oh, and I'm going off to the side here. Uh. Oh, as we break because of the wheels being... Oh! Oh! Being off to the side. The braking is not great. Hmm. That might cause problems. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we didn't break anything. Let's go ahead and time warp to morning. Actually, let's time up to when it might be morning in both locations, if that's possible. Okay, yes it is. So we see where Cappy Rock is. Now, by the time we get there, it might be nighttime with this slow plane. 
Anyway, I I'm curious to try this on that flight. I guess maybe a ladder over here would- oh, or on this side would be good. No, Bill. Um, Thea caught Kerman in the cockpit. Okay, up we go. You're up. Crazy, crazy thing. So, what's our heading? We'll certainly go as high as possible. I should probably have some geodesic. I've been bitten on that before. So really, we want to go like... I think we're going 135 and going like that to it. Cutting closer to the pole. It's not easy to handle. I mean, it's not the worst thing I've ever tried to fly, but it's not easy to handle. Up we go. I feel like I might have to constantly roll to the right just to make sure it stays that way. Okay, let me try Fizz Warp. It's a bit wobbly. Well, at this rate it's gotta be a long trip. Because I have to keep correcting it. I don't think it's doing gonna do a particularly good job at higher altitudes right now. That's why I'm not climbing more aggressively. They didn't say anything about coming back. So we are relying on this being a one-way journey. Just watch as a freaking... I mean, it doesn't look like it's a mountain. It looks like it's desert and flat. But... If it's a mountain, you can't land there. You know, maybe I can steer it in 4x. I should have dumped the mock propellant, <laughs> as usual. Also, probably there was some atmospheric instrument I should have carried. If I put that over here, that would have been helpful. I feel like I should use some roll trim. Uh, but the roll trim overdoes it. We're through a little bit more than 10% of our fuel, and I don't know, it's a tight call as far as whether we can get there with the fuel that we have. Really, I should have reckoned about the drag there a little bit more. Maybe we could have shortened the wing so it didn't have so much moment, even though we have, we balanced the mass. It might be better to balance for the drag a little bit more. Basically heading south right now. As far as the nav ball is concerned. We've used more than 20% of our fuel. And... well... Let's see, you can make an argument that we're about 20% of the way there, so... Now I just have to remember to turn off the time warp when I try to land. Something I keep forgetting. Okay, through about 30% of our fuel, I think. Well, it's still conceivably getting there. So what can I do? Guess we continue. I mean, it's a close call. It's a fair experiment in that I don't know whether we're going to get there or not. It's not obvious one way or another. Wish it hadn't been such an ocean route. Although well, we have to definitely cross this ocean, but we'll be hitting land soon. So hopefully there'll be more sights to see and such. I see mountains over there. Uh, the landing site is getting into nighttime. We're over land, but it's not the most inspiring land ever. This height doesn't seem to be super detailed. We're a long way from the KSC. We're probably closer to our destination than the KSC, so it's looking pretty good. I have to like avoid plunging into the ground and stuff like that. I've tried to add some pitch trim, but it's tough. The lake there. 
in the midst of the mountains. It's feeling rather nose heavy, so I'm gonna try and move the fuel back a bit. Okay, that's probably better. Oh, I think I had put an extra methane tank over here before. We're carrying 2.4 tons of oxidizer. I didn't order that. We were not supposed to have. Oh, when I when the thing when I reloaded the craft file, I didn't realize that we had the 2.4 tons of oxidizer. Oh, we've been carrying that mess the whole way. We were supposed to have another tank of the methane. No wonders we're leaning too far to the left. I really want to dump the oxidizer somehow. Uh, well, um, maybe we can pump this uh, methane into the main tanks. That, that might help a little bit. But yeah, we've been we've been carrying stuff that we did not need to carry. So this would do a lot better without that oxidizer. <laughs> well, we are through more than half of our fuel. It's going to be nighttime. Worried about how that's gonna be at the landing location. It's amazing it's doing even this well with the 2.4 tons on that side, which it was I, I didn't mean for it to have. One rough thing about this is it's not going to be good at taxiing, so... yeah. Once we get to the ground, assuming we can survive that part, that could be a problem. Hopefully it's a big rock like some of the other monuments so we don't have trouble seeing it. Honestly, it might have been that if we weren't carrying that oxidizer, I could have gone all the way there and made it back even. Of course, we might have to adjust the wing pieces a little bit or stuff like that if uh, I had based it all around the mass being there. But I think I had had another methane tank over there was the idea. Okay, well we see land in front. At least there's some semblance of something that might help me out. Well, we see the location right there. Okay. What do they mean by curb-wide tour though? Is that because we just sort of like went basically halfway around Kerbin or are they planning some other stops here? Okay, 1x now. Uh, it doesn't look like a huge monument. Some sort of semblance of a hill there. Well, I think I'd be happier if the Kerbal went out and took a look. I'd like to get closer. But I'd also like to land safely, so this is tough. I don't like what's in front of me. Let me turn around again. I can't tell whether that's a cloud or land. Okay, well, we'll just try it along this path and get as close as we can get. Oh, I think it's on top of a mountain. Uh oh. This is the least likely vehicle to be a pleasant rover. Oh, we hopped. Hey, I don't want to hop. I don't want to hop. Oh gosh. I think I just lost the Mark One lander can though. <laughs> no. It doesn't count if we don't have the Mark 1 lander can, right? With a lander can. No, launch a vessel with a lander can and perform a crew observation at Cappy Rock. It, says, it doesn't say land a vessel with a lander can, right? I don't know. That, that, I, I don't know how they're tracking that. 
We definitely launched a vessel with a lander can. We just haven't landed one with a lander can. <laughs> um, can we actually skid over there? No. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, no. That's a bad idea. Okay. Well, Theokot's not getting back in that plane. Very, um, caterpillary kind of sound over here. Well, I'll read a book while doing this. Oh, the sound of walking has changed. Apparently this is slightly different terrain. I already got the beach observation. We've made a long trip, but will my ploy work? Will it just be launching a vessel with a lander can? Will it be satisfied with that? Is that even an issue, or is it just the crew observation that they care about, really? Obviously, up here, trying to get a plane up here would have been tough, but I didn't know the terrain. It did look like, you know, a beach-like desert, so we've seen those, and I thought it wouldn't be too hard to land at, but as it turns out, it's hard to land at it. And so maybe they just suggested the lander can because they knew that that would be the case. Oh, different chain, uh, different sound now. But it might be that we just need to send something right up close to it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Oh, oh, no, we've arrived and there's some ground cover here. It's been, it's been pretty barren. I guess it's only has some weeds close to our destination. Is it one of those balancing rock kind of things? I think we should be close enough. Okay, crew observation. Okay, it's satisfied. We didn't have to have a lander can here, so that's fine. Um, why don't we time warp so we can see it in daylight? Since we can... Ah, there we go. Since we can just recover the Kerbal here. Alright, so Cappy Rock. Um, I'm trying to figure out whether it's supposed to look like something in particular. Like a space whale. No, I'm <laughs> imagining things a little bit too much. Let me just go over to the other side to see. Well, that's our terrain so far. Um, we came a long way. A VTOL might have been able to land over here, but not the plane I made. I should have gone with a VTOL. Oh well. I just had asymmetric planes stuck in my head. Get a further view. Yeah, I think I think that's just it. I don't think we need to worry about it having a greater significance. Though so there's some feature over there. <laughs> I always end up uh, exploring things that are adjacent to the thing that is actually important. But uh, I don't think we're gonna get over there. I mean, whatever is up there is definitely of significant size, though. Okay, yeah, it's just a rock. That's okay. Alright, let's recover the Kerbal. Recover Vessel. Okay, we got the Kerbal back. And in Mission Control, we can mark that off. Submit. 320. Tippy top of Cavi Rock. We didn't actually go to the top. Oh, uh, they wanted us to squint and spin fast to make it look like a capybara? I don't think so. I tried my best to imagine it was something, but I didn't detect capybara. Oh, there's a new curb wide tour. Uh-oh. Launch a vessel with a lander can. <laughs> Maybe I should actually do a lander can this time. Actually, I'll let you guys decide. We have to go to Stargazer Point, wherever that is. And you guys will decide whether it's a uh, plane with a lander can or whether we actually use a lander can this time. I think a plane might... We'll try a different plane, obviously. And maybe it'll be a VTOL. 
Probably it'd be safer if it's a VTOL. But yeah, uh, we're tracking that mission. And again, uh, the principle is that we'll just get through all the easy... I say easy, but I made this really hard. Uh, easy stuff first, and then hit these, and then ultimately end up with the EVE one. So anyway, we didn't kill our cripple this time. And so with that, with that, I'll wrap it up here and say thank you for watching. hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.